His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. Signed, Arthur James Balfour. Britain was looking for allies and in the search of allies, Britain made three promises which were incompatible with one another. The first promise was to Hussein, the Sharif of Mecca, and the promise was that if he mounted an Arab revolt, a revolt against the Ottoman Empire, Britain would support the establishment of an independent Arab kingdom under his rule after the war. So Britain promised Palestine to the Arabs. In 1916, there was the Sykes-Picot Agreement, a secret agreement between Britain and France to divide the Middle East into a French sphere of influence and a British sphere of influence. But they couldn't agree on Palestine, so Palestine was to be put under a separate international administration. Clearly, this secret agreement contradicted the promise of an independent Arab kingdom. But worse was to come, because in 1917, Britain issued the Balfour Declaration promising uh, Palestine as a national home for the Jews. He didn't think about the consequences of the incompatible promises that it made. If Britain had lost the war, then she wouldn't be called on to fulfill the prom any of the promises. And if Britain won the war, then as, as Richard Nixon used to say, when we get to this bridge, we will double cross it. Today, Britain should do a reckoning about its failure to protect Palestinian rights. And Britain should come to terms with the fact that it enabled a Zionist minority to begin the systematic takeover of the entire country.